Ian Buxton, um, whiskey writer and whiskey commentator. I've worked in the whiskey industry for about 25 years and most recently published two books, uh, 101 Whiskies to Try Before You Die, which I'm delighted has just reprinted in its second edition, and a follow-up, 101 World Whiskies to Try Before You Die. And I was trying to look at whiskies which, first of all, would give people a great bang for their buck. They had to be great value for money. There's a lot of very expensive whiskey out there at the moment, and uh, there's good reasons for that, but you don't always have to pay a huge amount of money. Secondly, was it accessible? Was it something you could find? Because, again, there are some fabulous whiskies, but they're very, very obscure or they're in very small quantities in very limited distribution. So in a practical sense, not so much fun for people. And third, I guess, would I drink it? Could I genuinely recommend it to people? While personal preference on whiskey can be as diverse as the grains they originate from, so too are the many distilleries that are helping to evolve the industry. What is very, very exciting at the moment, what is happening, uh, all the traditional companies, uh, traditional countries are, are expanding, they're growing, they're bringing out new whiskies. But what we're seeing is a new world of whisky. So, for example, uh, whisky is now being made in France, it's being made in Belgium, it's being made in Finland. I was just speaking to people today making whisky in New Zealand. Um, and almost anywhere, you throw a stick and you're going to find somebody making whisky. The quality is varies. The quality is good. The quality can be questionable. Some of the good is very good indeed. And speaking of the very best, Elite Traveller has recently released a list of the most outstanding whiskies on the market. From Jefferson's limited edition Presidential Select to the inimitable Single Malt by Nika, Ian Buxton introduces us to five of the finest from different corners of the globe. This was made just for one merchant in Dublin, a firm called Mitchells, who were wine merchants, and they specified the particular type of whiskey they wanted. Go back 30 or 40 years ago, that wasn't that uncommon, but bit by bit, all the other competitors dropped by the wayside, and Greenspot was left as the sole example of this pot still uh, Irish whiskey distilling style, which was the traditional Irish style back in the 19th century. What's great to say is that even since I talked about Green Spot, some other whiskies in this style have now been released. So there's a chance for people to explore that whole world of pot still distilling, take themselves back to the 19th, early 20th century uh, and reveal something new by looking back into history. So Glenfarclas 40 year old, which is one whiskey I particularly recommend. That's actually what I've got here in this glass. So you can see it's lovely uh, amber color. This is from a distillery on Speyside, still uh, owned by the same family since the 1860s. Very traditional style of production. And if I nose this whiskey, it's uh, wonderfully warm. It's evocative of Christmas, of Christmas cake, of spices, of dried fruits, raisins, and so forth. A lot of depth of flavor to this. It's waited 40 years. So when I sample it, I'm gonna hold it in my mouth for a little while and there's a big explosion of flavor. This is an absolute classic of its kind uh, from a very traditional, quite old fashioned company doing things the way things used to be. But I particularly endorse this because it represents fantastic value for money. They don't spend a lot of money on advertising, so it isn't very well known. They don't spend a lot of money on packaging, so it looks quite plain, but all the values in the bottle, and my goodness, what fabulous value it is. McAllen is uh, famous really around the world. It was once described as the Rolls Royce of single malts. And uh, I think it fully deserves that description. Today it's become a luxury brand and it's enjoyed worldwide. But the classic Macallan style is the sherry finishing. It really benefits from the extra years. You can buy it at 10, you can buy it at 12, but in my opinion, it reaches peak around 18 to 21 years old. So that for me is the, the finest expression of Macallan and the best combination of uh, product quality and value for money. You can buy older Macallans and they're very enjoyable, they're very rich. You do pay more, you get what you pay for, but as an everyday buy, go for that 18 year old. Jefferson's probably the most obscure of the whiskies we've picked here, but nonetheless I have every confidence in it. This is a small batch bourbon from the USA. Bourbon uh, suffered from its blue collar image. Um, it went down in sales. But then people began to find, because it was held that bit longer, they weren't selling it, 
it aged that bit longer. Because of the high temperature, the high humidity of the warehouses in the USA, you've got fantastic aging effects. And the Jefferson people have been able to select individual barrels to buy from some of the best distilleries to, to blend and vat their bourbon to provide a really quite unusual experience. So if you like bourbon, pay extra, move up, try something like this uh, Jefferson 17-year-old. People tend to forget about Japan. The Japanese whiskey industry is really not that old. It uh, really only started after the First World War. It was, first of all, uh, heavily influenced by Scotland, and they tried to ape Scottish whiskey styles, and that really didn't work too well for them. But after the Second War, uh, growing confidence in Japan, they began to make more distinctively Japanese whiskies. And so they have now single malt, made in a slightly different way, using slightly different uh, a mixture of ingredients, and using Japanese wood. So they've worked and worked at it. They've now developed a distinctively Japanese style to their single malt. So we have whiskies like Yamazaki, but this particular whiskey from the Yoichi distillery um, really comes out very, very well at a relatively young 10 years of age. So if you'd like to try Japanese whiskey, which is one of the five great classic styles around the world, this would be a fantastic entry point to Japanese whiskey.